In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the work done by a force, but using the dot product formula. Now, if we want to calculate the work done by this force, this is likely a rope pulling a block, we could use this formula. It's equal to the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the object's displacement times cosine theta. So let's say we have a force of 300 newtons directed at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal. And let's say we're going to pull this block five meters to the right. So to calculate the work done by this force, we have a magnitude of 300 newtons. The displacement is five meters. The angle is the angle between the two vectors. So here's the force vector, and here is the displacement vector. Theta is the angle between them. So this is going to be cosine of 40 degrees. So let's go ahead and plug this in. So you should get 1,149 joules. So that's the simplest way to get the answer. If you know the magnitudes of the two vectors and the angle between them, you can calculate the work done by that force using the force and displacement vectors. But now let's calculate that same answer using the dot product formula. So work is the dot product of the force vector and the displacement vector. In order to calculate the dot product, we need to multiply x components of the force and the displacement vectors. And then we're going to add that to the product of the y components. Now, we have a two-dimensional vector, so this is all we need. If we had a three-dimensional vector, we could also add fz times dz. We would multiply the z components of the force and the displacement vector. Since we don't have that, we're not going to worry about that in this video. Now, in order to use this formula, we need to convert the force and the displacement vector. We need to express them in their component form. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with the force vector. So F is going to be the magnitude, which is 300, times cosine of the angle. And this will give us the X component associated with the unit vector I. And then for the y component of f, it's going to be 300 sine 40 times the unit vector j. So 300 cosine 40, that's going to be two hundred i and then 300 sine 40, that's 192.84 times j. So those are the components of the force vector. Now, let's do the same thing for the displacement vector. Let's put it in component form. So the displacement vector has a magnitude of 5. And because it's parallel to the x-axis, it has an angle of 0 degrees. So it's going to be 5 cosine 0 degrees times i plus 5 sine of 0 times j. Now, cosine 0 is 1, so we're going to get 5i. Sine 0 is 0, so 0j zero or simply 5i. So now we have both the force vector in its component form and the displacement vector in this component form. But I'm going to I'm going to use this one here. So now let's plug it into this formula. So the work done it's going to be fx times dx so that's fx dx is 5i and then plus fy dy fy is 
192.84 and dy is 0j. So there's no work done in the y direction in this problem. We do have work done in the x direction, but no work done in the y direction. So it's 229.81 times 5. Now it gives the same answer of 1149 joules. But that's how you can calculate the work done using the dot product formula. If you know the force and the displacement vector in its component form. Now, let's work on another example. So let's say the block is on an incline. And we're going to apply a force in this direction. That force is 30 degrees above the incline. And the incline itself is 20 degrees. And let's say the magnitude of this force is 200 newtons. So we're going to pull this block up the incline for a displacement of 12 meters along the incline. So with this information, go ahead and calculate the work done by this force as we pull the block up the incline for a distance of 12 meters. And calculate it both ways, the easy way and using the dot product formula. So let's redraw this. What we have here is we have a force vector and we have a displacement vector that looks like this. And the angle between the force and the displacement vector is 30 degrees. So we could simply use this formula to get the answer. The work done by this force is going to be Fd cosine theta. So the magnitude of the force is 200 newtons. The displacement vector has a magnitude of 12 meters. And then times an angle, or what times cosine 30. So 200 times 12 times cosine 30 is approximately 2,078 joules. Now, let's go ahead and get the same answer, but using the dot product formula. So let's put the force vector in its component form. The magnitude of the force is 200, but the angle relative to the x-axis, we have a total angle of 50 degrees. So this is going to be 200 cosine 50 i, and then plus 200 sine 50 j. So 200 times cosine 50, that's 128.56 times the unit vector i. And then 200 sine 50, that's 153.21 times j. So that is the force vector in component form. Now, let's write the displacement vector in component form. So the magnitude of the displacement vector is 12 meters, and it's 20 degrees above the horizontal, or above the x-axis. So it's going to be 12 cosine 20 degrees times i plus 12 sine 20 times j. Now, 12 cosine 20, that's 11. 0.276 times i. And then 12 sine 20, that's going to be 4.1042 times j. So that's the displacement vector in its component form. So now let's use the dot product formula. 
So to calculate the work done, it's going to be fx dx plus fy dy. So 128.56 times i, and then 11.276 times i. And then we'll multiply the y components together. So 153.21j times 4.1042j. Now, when you multiply the unit vector i and i, the dot product of i and i is 1, and the dot product of j and j is 1 as well. So 128.56 times 11.276. This is 1,449.64 joules. And then 153.21 times 4.1042. That's going to be 628.80 joules. Now, if we were to total two numbers, we would get approximately 2,078 joules. So as we could see, the answer is the same. Now, here's a question for you. What do these two values represent? Notice the 1449, that represents the work done in the x direction. The 628.80 joules, that is the work done in the y direction. When you add the work done in the x direction plus the work done in the y direction, given that these two are not vectors, but they're scalar of quantities, you're going to get the total work done by the force acting on this object. Now, just so you can understand how this works. So here we have the force vector. It has an x component, and it has a y component. And here we have the displacement vector which also has an x component and a y component. So when you're calculating the work done using the dot product, these two vectors, what we're really doing is we're multiplying the x components together. And then we're going to add that with the product of the y components. So we're multiplying the x components together to get the work done in the x direction. And we're multiplying the y components to get the work done in the y direction. Let me color code that. And then once we total that, that's going to give us the total work done by the force vector. Now, let's work on one more problem. So let's say if you're given the force and the displacement vector in component form. So let's say you have a force which is 3i minus 4j plus 7k, and you're given the displacement vector. Let's say it's 8i plus 7j minus 9k. Go ahead and calculate the work done by this force, given the displacement vector. So if you're ever given the force and displacement vector in component form, just use the dot product formula. So the work done is going to be the dot product of f and d, which is going to be fx dx plus fy dy plus fz dz. So it's going to be 3i times 8i, and then plus negative 4j times 7j, plus 7k times negative 9k. So 3 times 8, that's going to be 24. 
dot product of i and i is 1, so it's just going to be 24 joules. Negative 4 plus, se I mean, times 7, that's negative 28. And then 7 times negative 9, that's negative 63. So 24 minus 28, that's negative 4. And negative 4 minus 63, that's going to be negative 67. So we have negative work done. Now, if you're wondering what is the difference between positive work and negative work, here it is. So whenever the force and the displacement vector, if they're in the same direction, the work done by that force is going to be positive. If the force and the displacement vectors, if they're in opposite directions, the work done will be negative. If the force is perpendicular to the displacement, the work done by that force in that direction is going to be zero. So the components must be parallel in order for you to multiply them, or the vectors must be parallel. If not, you need to multiply the components together. But that's the difference between positive work and negative work. A force will do positive work if it's applied in the same direction as the displacement. The force will do negative work on the object if it's applied opposite to the object's displacement. So that's what is happening in the previous problem. The fact that we had negative work being done means that the force is, for the most part, moving in a direction that's opposite to the object's displacement. I said that wrong, displacement. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good introduction into how to calculate the force using the dot product. I mean, how to calculate the work done by a force using the dot product formula. By the way, for those of you who want more practice problems on work, energy, things like that, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be putting more content there, so feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance.